sorry about that. If you are excited to be here, give the Lord a shout. Okay. Uh, please appreciate the Lord with a shout again. Holy Ghost, another one thousand times. Another measure. Holy Ghost, another one thousand times. Another measure. Holy Ghost, another one thousand times. Another measure. Another measure. Another measure. Another measure. Holy Ghost, another one thousand times. of God. One of the weapons against the enemy is joy. I realize that in the midst of the situation, God does not want us to panic. God does not want us to be afraid. God does not want us to come to a point where we are discouraged. I have learned a long time ago that nobody hear God from a troubled mind. Nobody hear God from a troubled heart. One of the weapon against the enemy is joy. And no matter the situation you find yourself, Jesus said, peace be still. Stand still and you shall see the salvation of the Lord. For the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more. 
forever. When you want to walk in faith, faith does not deny the mountain. Faith only gives you the courage to stand before the mountain and tell him, be thou the move. But how can you have the courage and the boldness to stand before the mountain and speak to the mountain if you are broken in heart? And that is the reason why anytime we appear before the presence of God, we must have an understanding that our faith requires boldness to be able to walk. And it doesn't matter what the devil has done, so long as you can stand and look at him. Get out! You come to a point where the devil will look upon you and he can't discourage you. In the moment when he wants you to be depressed, in the moment when he wants you to be downcasted, to be broken, that moment is the moment where you find yourself in an adult lamp and you find yourself rejoicing. You find yourself excited. Those that were in debt, the Bible said, those that were cast away, those that were depressed, those that were despair, those that there was nothing reckoned about their lives, they were given up upon by life. They found themselves in a cave. And in that cave, they became the mighty men of David. They forgot about their situation and they behold the Lord. And when they behold the Lord, the Lord did something to them that they could never do to themselves. The Bible said, no matter how much you worry, it will not add a strand to your hair. So why then worry? He said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, through prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. That means even the man that is broken need courage enough to talk to God for God to hearken unto him. Pray in one minute. Forget about your depression. Pray in one minute and say, oh God, I have appeared before you. I have appeared before you. Speak unto me. Speak unto me. You serve the God. You don't serve the devil. God is your master. You came before Jesus, not before the devil. Forget about what the devil is doing. Look upon what God is doing. Shabana Nakiska Randa Kababela Sabriya Sad Rabana Kabena Skabaria Skata Shababela Skabeta Ranta Kabela Tena Baria Shababela Kabaria Skababaladia Ranta Kababela Tabria Skata Shabalada Babura Tababaladina Makaska Randa Kababela Skabadia Ada Babela Dababura Dia Baladia Skatan Ramba Bella Dira Baskadia Hallelujah 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 Our time is fast spent Don't mind me I'm so angry with the devil Anytime I appear, there is an anger in my spirit. It takes a certain level of violence of faith and anger towards the devil to serve God. If you feel what the devil is doing is okay, you have a reason to feel God is not just. But by the time you understand that the devil is your number one arch enemy, not an individual first. He can manipulate people against you, but he is the number one enemy. So your anger should be channeled towards him at every point in time. Before we advance, have your seat as you help me appreciate the angel over this commission. Our beloved friend and brother, Apostle Gip Ngambi, please help me appreciate him again. <laughs> and his beloved wife, Pastor Yvonne, please appreciate her. I also want you to also help appreciate our beloved friend, uh, Pastor Eli Regalado came all the way from the U.S. Uh, welcome to Africa. Help me appreciate all the pastors, the bishop, the apostles, and everyone present and yourself. Please help me appreciate. Thank you so much. Uh, for those streaming online, you can comment where you are watching us from and also shout on your comment section. Say, devil, you are a bastard. Go with me to the book of Psalms 91. I want to pick up from where we stopped yesterday. I, yesterday, I could not even do my teaching. I wanted to teach, but I could not. My redeemer, walk with me. 
my redeemer walk with me i am nothing without your presence my redeemer walk with my redeemer My Redeemer, I am nothing, I am nothing without your presence. My Redeemer, my Savior, my Savior, my Savior. I am nothing. I am nothing without your presence. My Savior, walk with me. Walk with me. I am nothing without your presence. My Savior, walk with me. One more time, my Redeemer. My Redeemer, walk with me. My Redeemer. My Redeemer, walk with me. I am nothing. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 91. The anchor scripture for this conference. The benefit of his presence. The benefit of his presence. Yesterday I tried to let you understand the importance of the presence of God. Why do we need the presence of God? There is so much limitation attached to mortality. There is so much limitation attached to mankind. There is a limit to which mankind can do. The person that stand by you today can become your arch enemy tomorrow. The person that defend you today can become uh, a snare to you tomorrow. But it takes God alone to deliver us from the snare of the bowler. To deliver us from the noise of the pestilence. And because of that, our anchor is not upon men, it's upon God. It doesn't matter the structure where you find yourself, the sector where you find yourself, whether in ministry, whether in government, whether in business, whether anywhere you find yourself. You need to be able to understand that God has to be your only strength and support. He has to be the only one walking with you, leading you and guiding you. Why? Because a time comes when men fail. Is that okay? And even if a man decides not to fail you, you need to be able to understand that men have limitations. God created mankind with so much limitation, and it was intentional. One of the true characteristics of a man is his ability to fail. In fact, the Bible says the heart of a man is desperately wicked. Not because of anything, but because mankind in himself has the capacity to fail you. So if tomorrow you wake up one day and I disappoint you, maybe I promise you something, I did not do it. And you come, you see, Philip Cephas, why disappoint me? What you did not understand is that I am a mankind laden with all kinds of infirmity. And because of the nature of my infirmity, part of the allotment in my infirmity is the ability to disappoint. It's only God himself that is self-sufficient that does not, cannot lie. Is that okay? The Bible says God is not a man that he can lie. Neither the son of man that he can lie. So they are trying to let you understand that it's only God that can come to a standpoint in creation that can do something and say something and establish it. But it's possible for mankind to fail. So in the days when mankind fail, what do you do? You return back to God. But wise men do not wait for men to fail. They always find their coordinating operations in life from God. A time come your wisdom will fail you. A time come even your power may fail you. That was the start point of yesterday. Is that okay? So you return back to the realm of the glory where man does not really need to walk. In the realm of glory, you come into alignment 
and you benefit from that which God has made available. That was the state where Adam was in. Adam does not need power, sir. Adam does not even need knowledge. In fact, Adam was created in the realm of glory. He was supposed to just enjoy the benefits in the glory. So God did everything, finished everything, and gave Adam an advantage. So Adam has an advantage in the garden that he found himself. So each and every one of us was created to dwell in the garden of God. And in that garden of God, man does not need to work. Why? Because God has made available what man needs. So, but because of the treason of Adam, because of the decadence upon which Adam subjected creation to, mankind have to devise another system to maintain himself. And that system that mankind has deserved, has derived, actually makes mankind alienated from God. So, automatically, mankind became far from God. Why? Because mankind has to go begin to find what to eat, what to drink. In the beginning, it was not so. In the beginning, if mankind want anything, he just need to behold the Lord. The Bible said in the Garden of Eden, there were trees that give knowledge. So, you don't need to go to a school. You just stand by a tree, a knowledge will, give, will be given to you. In the Garden of Eden, there are balms in Gilead. There are all kinds of trees for the healing of the nations. In that garden of Eden, there is a water, a river that flows that has the ability to bring to life anything that is dead. So in the realm of glory, there is the availability of everything mankind needs for him to be able to survive. In the realm of glory is the realm where you stand, you speak the end from the beginning. So whatever you want, you just think. That was where the Bible said, before you think about a thing, God knows about it. Now you should not even worry about it because the Father knows you see, but because of the fallen state of mankind, mankind believes that God is not aware. And we need a mechanism called prayer to make God aware. But the sincere truth was that the intention of God before prayer was not supposed to be a tool required to ask him to give me. It was supposed to be a tool for fellowship. Because God is already aware of what you need, so he did not create prayer for you to request for something. Prayer was created for you to communicate with him. But because we have been isolated from the Garden of Eden, now we don't have the availability that is made possible for us. So we need to be able to use prayer as a tool to receive. And one of the reasons you must understand that in the realm of the glory, we don't pray to receive. We pray to enter into a pool. And when we enter into that pool, we come into oneness with God and we begin to partake of the thing that has been eaten before time began. Then the thing that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, is made available to us. Why? Because we love him. You can be a prayer warrior that doesn't love God. In fact, you are angry with God because he has not answered your prayer request. Somebody called me, I have prayed, I have done this, God has not answered. I said, when will you begin to love the Lord? You need to be able to understand that in the realm of the glory, we take away the things we do mechanically to gain an advantage and we step into a pool by alignment. And in that realm of glory, God begins to know the things you need and even the things you never prayed for, he gives it to you. So anytime you look upon an individual... Anytime you look upon an individual that complains, oh God, you have not answered this prayer, you have not, I will show you the things you never prayed for that God answered. How comes there are things you never prayed for that God answered and you are worried for the things you prayed for that he seems not to have answered? How did he answer the things you never prayed for? It was because you came into a point, you forgot about the need to pray for them and you begin to enjoy the glory and those things came to you. In the realm of the glory, there are secret things that God has made available, but he only give it to them that can forget that as though they have a problem. I told you, there are people that look upon mountains and walk through the mountain. It's not as if the mountain did not exist. They exist, but we know that our father loved us so much to allow a mountain to stay by us. So when they were in the boat, and it looks as though it's going to capsize, they didn't know that if the boat was supposed to capsize, is Jesus not with them in the boat? Why are they worried? I mean, you think if the boat is going to capsize, he's there with them. If he is calm, they are supposed to be calm. If he's sleeping, they are supposed to be sleeping. But because they cannot reason like him, they cannot think like him, they don't really have the mind of Christ yet. So they feel we need to wake him up. And by the time they wake him up, he look upon them, all ye men of little faith. He speak to it and it come. But I want you to understand that before him speaking to it, there was a time when there was this storm and he walked upon it. That is to let you understand if it was left for him, he would never even speak to it. He will remain in the midst of the storm. 
and nothing will happen to him. That is to let you understand that God intends that you come to a point, a higher realm of operation, where you see as you see, and you function and operate as you operate. Why? The reason why I'm telling you this is because there are many things that God cannot do for you because your faith is in a measure that is very low. And you see, when God look upon you, you are looking at the challenge in Zambia. He's looking upon you. Say, when can you come to my realm of thinking? So that I can be able to act like you, function like you, and reason like you. Just as he is in heaven. And you must be able to understand, if Jesus appears in Zambia here, he doesn't care whether it's not a friend to the president. He can do what he wants to do and things will work well. Why? Because there is a way he understood that his economy does not come from Zambia. It comes from above. And because he comes from above, he can speak even to the government of Zambia and beyond to be able to find a way to bless him. Check very well. Many more times when God did tremendous things in your life, you thought you were wise. You would literally realize that you can't calculate it. The matters of faith are not calculated. The Bible says by faith we understand. Not by understanding we have faith. You cannot understand the things of God by your mind. Your mind is too weak. You require the moniker of faith to understand. And even this moniker of faith, you need to build it. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But faith coming is not enough. You need to build up your faith. So Jude one twenty says, Yea, beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That means there are things that you receive by default in the days your faith has reached a measure. So when you look upon him, he look upon him and begin to let them understand that the reason why you could not receive this thing was because of your lack of faith, your unbelief. So there are some things that happen simply because men do not believe God. That means the day you believe God, you begin to see certain possibilities happen. Check again. The reason why I prayed and God answered, and the reason why another person prayed, God did not answer. It may be the standpoint of faith. Why? Because without faith, you cannot please God. So if by your prayer without faith, you can't please God, it's possible with faith, even without prayer, you can please God. No matter how much I pray for you, if you don't have faith to believe it, it will not work. Your prayer must come from the standpoint of faith. Because faith itself has already given you a substance to be able to hope for something. Why pray for what you don't believe it exists? Why are we praying for what we think it doesn't exist? Faith has made it available. Grace gives you the ability to be able to lay hold of it. But the problem is that we are praying sometimes out of faith. What I mean by that is that we come to, we appear before God. Somebody appear before God in a secret place and believe that this God is not real. If you believe God is not real, how can he be real to you? So your limitation now becomes your lack of faith. The Bible says they limited God in the wilderness, asking a stupid question. Can God make a way? Did he make a way? Surely. But everyone that limited him never saw the glory because all of them died. Because if you refuse to believe God by faith, the time will come, you won't exist again. Because even your existence is upon the reality of faith. How do you know you are going to wake up tomorrow by faith? How are you sure you are not going to sleep tomorrow, today and die tomorrow by faith? Because I have seen people that pray more than you died. I have seen people that fasted more than you died. I have seen people that know more than you died. But the time come when the faith of men failed them. That's why Jesus taught Peter, 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 the devil desired to strip you like a reed, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And in the day you are strong, strengthen your brethren. He may never lose his prayer life, but he lost his faith. His faith failed. Judas came to a point where he hung himself. Why? Not because he betrayed Jesus. Because Peter did the same thing. But the reason why Judas hung himself was because his faith failed. If Judas would have waited, Jesus resurrected, he will forgive him. You are not as bad as evil as you think you are. But let your faith fail not. We should be able to hold on a little bit. There are many people that just give up just when it's about to happen. Just when the matter is about to change, that's when they give up. Many people just committed suicide just when God is about to answer their prayers. Many people just kill themselves just when it's about to happen. How are you sure that tomorrow things may change? By this time, tomorrow. The matters of faith is not about when. It's about, not even about how it will happen. It happens like a miracle. That's why the Bible says, when the Lord return again, the captivity in Israel, it will be as though we dream. How can a prophet appear by a valley full of dry bones and he was demanded to prophesy to it? What he did not see was that at that very moment, the prophet became a captain of army of the land. 
This was a valley full of dry bones. All the armies were dead. The people that were allotted to go for war, somehow they were ambushed. And it became a Kadesh Benya. All of them died. They became dry bones. And the nation forsake them. And a prophet appeared by that valley. And the Lord said, oh son of man, can these bones live again? Ah, ah. Are the bones not living? They are living. But what he was asking, can out of this impossible situation bring something that is possible? The first training of a prophet is to come to a point where he doesn't think like men. Because if you think like men, you perish like men. They don't know, neither do they understand. So they walk on in darkness. And all the foundation of the earth is out of course. The reason is simply because men limited God by their own limitation. They saw within a veil and they believed that God is actually hidden in a veil. And when the prophet began to think like God, he said, yes, I believe. But it's not about me now, it's about you. Because none of us is going to doubt whether God is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience. But you are going to doubt yourself whether are you omnipotent, are you omnipresent, or omniscience. Because God can tell you something and you still don't believe it. And I told you, the Lord told him, believe in me, believe in people, and believe in yourself. Most importantly, believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody will believe in you. If you don't believe in yourself, even God himself will find it very hard to believe in you. Moses, I want to use you. Moses said, you can't use me. So God had to take a lot of time to bring Moses to a point where he has to believe that God can use him. Because by the time Moses can reason together with God, God can now do the impossible. What you call impossible is not impossible to everybody. The things you call not possible is not possible within your realm of existence. There is a realm you enter. Everything is possible. The Bible said every, all things are possible to them that believe. I can do all things through Christ. Forget about English language. There is a realm of possibility. If you check through scripture, there is nothing called impossible. No wonder our beloved pastor, Pastor Jerry Eze said, what God cannot do does not exist. So are you going to come and introduce to me another thing and tell me that this thing is not possible? It's not possible with men, but with God, all things are possible. But what makes them possible? The molecule of faith. You can only believe all things are possible. And I want to let you understand you can step into this conference with an infirmity and believe that I'm not going back with it. Anytime Jesus Christ appeared before any person, Son of man, have mercy upon me. Heal me. See, I have the capacity to heal you, but do you believe you can be healed? There was never a time that Jesus Christ did anything. He said, yes, uh, I, I think I'm a superman of God now. He said, your faith has healed you. That means all true. They have the capacity to get themselves healed, but they never got healed. Yes. In fact, a centurion man came and met him. Come and lay hands. After a while, he said, don't even lay hands. Just speak the word. When you speak the word, my servant will be. At that very moment, the servant was healed. If he did not shift his paradigm of faith and believe it, if he believed that until hand is laid, until hand is laid, he won't be healed. But when he came to a point, he said, just speak the word. And Jesus said, I have never seen such a faith even in Israel. That means faith can be in different levels. It can be in different measures. So prayer helps you build your faith. Because it's possible for you to be praying and praying. And because you don't have the faith to receive it, you are handicapped. And let me tell you, another problem with faith looks like a problem. Is that faith in itself is handicapped without grace. Faith is handicapped without grace. If God did not supply grace, faith seems to be handicapped. Because whatsoever you lay hold of by faith, it's made available because grace supplied it. So Paul can say, I am what I am by the grace of God. That grace was not in vain in that I what? Labor more than they all. There was a labor he was laboring, but that labor was in grace. So although faith seems to be supplied, grace was supplied first. So we advance to the degree to which grace is supplied. Say grace and peace be multiplied to you, to the knowledge. So as you advance in the knowledge of God, God supplied grace and he supplied peace. So in the midst of so many things, people are complaining on that, but you, you find yourself being elevated. So when others say they are casting down, you say there is a lifting up. Not because but grace is supplied for you. It's like a velocity, it's like a force given unto you to enter into a cruising altitude. 
how all of a sudden a plane will go up. No, don't worry. This one will be supply certain mechanism to help him go up. It's the same way in your life. No matter your faith, you can stand and speak and speak and speak. If grace is not made available, your faith is handicapped. So that is the reason why if you check in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 11, when they talk about the people that, of course, by faith they did this, by faith they did that, they now went further, down towards 30 something. They begin to speak about some people that even through their faith, some their faith took them to go to jail to die. Some their faith make, make them to be so asunder. Some their faith, some people now through their faith, they have to endure persecution. They have to go through criminal things. Why? That means, all those kind of people, grace was not supplied for them to actualize what their faith had believed in them. But that kind of people are, ter are terrible. Why? Because they make God to become like a debtor. Because they without us are not being made perfect. Those are the kind of people that after they have lived and believed God, they had so much faith. Yet again, nothing seems to happen. Why? Because grace was not supplied. So they came to a point where they entered so many dimensions. Yet again, they could not manifest it. Why? Because grace was not supplied for manifestation. So those dimensions now became things that they have to manifest in time to come. So some of them upon the face of the earth, they now came and died. And because they died, another generation have to come to continue from where they stopped because they have already paid a price for it. So there are people that are going to stop into the inheritance of what other people are paying a price by faith. Now grace is now supplied. And because the appointed time has come, manifestation become normal. Because when God supplies grace, he begins to make everything work for good. But when he does not supply grace, no matter how much you pray in faith, it will still be like that. So one of our greatest prayer is God supply grace unto me. And when God wants to supply grace to a man, he does what we call the help of God. Because anyone God chooses to help, he supply grace for him. You are in a situation where you are giving up on yourself. You have come to the end of yourself. You now say, God, help me. At that point, that is when grace is supplied. When a man has come to the end of himself, that's when God now is introduced. Because God cannot truly help you if you still have another way, another means. The Bible speaks about the woman suffering with the issue of blood. How she moved helter skelter, move here, move there. And when everything has finished, her problem was because she has money. When all the money finished, now she knew that if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I can be made whole. That possibility was in her sins. She knew if she can touch the hem of his garment, she knew, but it was not a factor to be considered as long as there was money to go to the best hospital in America. But in the days when all the hospitals are done, she now said, okay, there's a last option if I can touch the hem of his garment. And now grace was now supplied for the hem of the garment. And he was not even aware. And as she touched, there was a healing. All through before that time, that possibility was there. She could not see. So grace and faith helps you to come to a point of realization of what God can do to you. And it doesn't matter the situation where you find yourself. By the help of God, the Ebenezer of God, you will locate a rock. You will locate a stone of help. And at that very moment, suddenly, you now see your life begin to work in a, in a, in a way that men cannot be able to gainsay. They cannot be able to explain. When we appear before God in glory shift, it's so that God can take us from one degree of glory to another degree of glory. It's not something that we have to labor. If we have to labor so much, it's not God. If it is God, there is not supposed to be so much labor, exertion of so no. Don't believe me. We labor to enter rest. When you enter rest, you walk in rest. Because when you enter rest, many things will work together for you. Others may be doing a business. You will do the same thing, but you will find it. Why? Because of the supply of grace. Because grace is supposed to make the thing a little bit easy. The burden and the yoke may be very heavy, but grace makes it a little bit light. And the things that people want to try that you are doing by the supply of grace, they try it and they find it very hard. I told you, it's hard to do anything without the help of God. Hard to do anything. If you want a hard life, neglect the help of God. You will see it. And where do we assess this help of God? That is my point so that we can pray. The secret place. The secret place is the dwelling place of the presence of God. Anyone that does not have a healthy secret place where he dwells with God does not have a future in God. If you don't have a place of isolation, 
where you dwell with God. A place where men do not know. All that you see about men is not all there is to them. In fact, I can come to your house today and you show me every part of your house. You will hide another part from me. Is that not true? Why? Because those parts does not concern me. Is that the truth? It's possible for you to stay in somebody's house for one month. You never enter other places in the house. You have no business to go there. Why? It's a secret place. There is a limit to which you are welcome in the house. Is that true? I met an occultic man once upon a time. And in the house, there is a room that nobody enters. Even his wife don't dare to enter. It's where he go to fellowship with the deity where he collected powers. So he only enter into that room for me to, sac to make sacrifice. If you dare enter inside, you will die. This is what is referred to as a secret place. God has a secret place. So the Bible is speaking in the book of Psalms 91. He said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There is a shadow of the Almighty that is found in the secret place of the Most High. That means God always appears in his secret place. But only those that are present in that secret place can see him. But what if you never enter into the secret place? You will never see him. There are some deeper communications that God does only in the secret place. And only those that are willing to go yonder can encounter it. Not everything of God is communicated at the same level. If we study the temple, you realize there is the outer court, there is the inner court, and there is the holies of holies, right? Whether you like it or not, the level and the degree of the glory of God capture is only of its highest capacity in the holies of holies. In fact, there is a limitation to those that can even enter. Just because you know there is the outer, the inner, and the most and the holies of holies doesn't mean you can just go and enter just like that. You may die. That's why it's called the secret place. What goes on in that place is too secret that normal men can't get in. The matters of the build up of men, what makes us who we are, happens from a secret place. And until you have been part of a secret place, you may never be able to have the uniqueness of the supply of the help of God. So David had to isolate himself to a cave called Adulam. What truly happened there are part of the allotment of what is referred to as a secret society. And until you are part of the society, you cannot understand. It's not given to a man to understand what happened in the secret place. Only a foolish man will go out on the street and tell people what happened between him and his wife in the secret place. Because even in your house, you have a secret place. You can't just come into your house and I just walk into your room and meet your wife at night. Or meet you where you are making, where you are with your wife together. I mean, you don't go live from that place. You don't go live on Facebook and say, we are live now, me and my wife in our secret place. You know, we are about to mount up. Join us live. Share the broadcast. It means you are foolish. Why? Because there are things that happen in the secret place that you don't go live. This generation of TikTok and uh, Instagram, everything people go live on. But how, how foolish are they that they will never, with as foolish as they can be, nobody go live when he took, you take your fiance or you take your wife and you go to the secret place and you are in the secret place, all of I, the beauty about the secret place is that you are naked and not ashamed. The Garden of Eden was a secret place. But when Adam sinned, he was ostracized, alienated. So we lost what we call the secret place. So in the book of Psalms, David understood that, that the strength of any man, mortal man, is back in the Garden of Eden. So he said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. Because the Most High... Because the most high has a shadow, but that shadow only appears in the secret place, in the garden of Eden. So as David was there, he ran, not because he wanted to be built by God. David ran to just go and hide. So he was in trouble, and he felt running away will help him. So he ran away to a place where normal people cannot find him. Where nobody will search on Facebook or YouTube to find him. Where no Google map can find. As he was there, suddenly a shadow appeared. When that shadow appeared, he now realized that what happened in this place is what men can't gain, say, within the city of Israel. It was built up, it was equipping, it was apostolic speaking. And a man that went there feeble came out and became a mighty man. Ah, 
What happened? It was a secret place where the most high ruled. Because God loved to hide himself. It is the glory of God to hide the matter. It's the honor of kings to search the matters out. You don't search the matters of kings in public places. You search the matters of kings in secret places. That's why two kings go for knowledge. Hidden ancient knowledge. And by the time they begin to excavate those knowledge, they journey into ancient inheritance that has been locked up for the tribe and the family. And now they realize that, Kai, there is a speaking word, there is an ordination concerning this tribe that nobody pay attention to. But as a king, you begin to excavate those matters. And anything you can find become yours. And when it becomes yours, it becomes a weapon. And a whole generation can come to you and begin to ask, how do you know these things? You just know them because you choose to know them. You appear in a secret place because they that dwell it in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. So the Bible speaks about the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis. That at the cool of the day, God will always come to fellowship with Adam and Eve. Ah! So they will hear the voice of God walking in the garden. When do we start hearing voice walk? It was a shadow. When you begin to dwell in the secret place, you can be in your office, sir, and only you in the office, you will hear the movement of a voice. He will turn. Did you call me? I didn't call you. Continue your work. So you can be in the office as you are working. You will hear a voice. You will turn to your God, boss. Boss, did you call me? I did not call you. Continue to work. Their voice is coming from the secret place. When Samuel was born, I told you Samuel was a product of prophecy. Samuel was never a son of Hannah. Samuel was born by God. Because according to the ordination, if you check, Samuel was designed to rule over Israel. He was a king, he was a priest, he was a prophet. You can never be a king in Israel without meeting Samuel. You can never even be a prophet without meeting him. There is no matters that regulate that confines without this man. Anything he speaks, God does it. These are men that their word does not fall to the ground. That kind of person is a Ben Elohim. So Jesus will look upon and say, oh, oh, who is my mother? Who is my father? You think it's Mary? You think it's Joseph? No. There is an ordination beyond Mary, beyond Joseph. They do not know me. In fact, you that you are hearing the word now, you are even more of my parent. Why? Because I'm communicating unto you the life of God. And suddenly, Penina has so many children, give birth like chicken, like I said. But Samuel was not giving birth like a chicken. The womb was short, not because she was barren. It was literally because God wanted to preserve a heritage to give birth to his own son. If God wants to give birth upon the face of the earth, how do you think it will come? When you look upon women like Mary, how did Jesus come? It was not by the sperm of Joseph. It was not possible. It was by a mechanism referred to as episcopal that the power of the Almighty shall come upon you. The Holy Ghost will descend, and you shall conceive. So the presence of God has the ability to impregnate. It has the ability to inject upon you a possibility. And you found out that you are pregnant. Have you been pregnant in the spirit? Do you know a man can be pregnant in the spirit? You can see yourself pregnant in the spirit, carrying the possibilities of God. Everyone is pregnant for his generation. It's left for you whether you give birth to it or you die. Or you are it miscarriage or it's aborted. And part of the plans of the enemy is to abort everything that each and every one was designed to birth in a generation. You may be designed according to the ordination to be a billionaire. You will come upon the face of the earth and suffer so, so bad. Why? Because you have not tarried enough in the secret place to bet it. The Bible says, as soon as Zion travail, he shall bet for it. Then we say, travail is required to give birth to destinies. And if you don't travail, it will be aborted. No woman go to the labor room and she is joking. The labor room is more like a secret place. It's the place of groaning. A place of travailing. You don't go there and say, hey, I need to look fine. I don't know. I need my, my, my Mary Kay. I need my Panky. I need my foundation. I need to, oh, I need to make my nails. I need, can you align me? Let me look beautiful. The secret place is not a place to look beautiful. It's a place where you go and you are breathed upon. The secret place is a place where you come the way you are and you are glorified. You are beautified. There is a decoration 
that happened only in the secret place. Only in the secret place. I know you are a fine girl. But fine girl, without the glory of God, is a waste of fine. <laughs> you say you are a big boy. Real big boy, they don't smoke and drink. Big boys, they pray, they preach, and they prophesy. Yeah. This one cannot happen anywhere except in the secret place. It's only in the secret place that everybody is admitted. You can be a prostitute, enter there. You can be a thief, enter there. You can be a drug addict, enter there. When you enter there, God begins to decorate you. He begins to decorate you. You submit yourself for emergency surgery. It's a theater of the spirit. And in that theater, they do a surgical operation. And suddenly, they take away the anger. They take away the lust. They take away the lie. They take away everything that doesn't look like God. And after three years, four years, you look upon yourself. You become a giant and a wonder. There are things that God does to people only in the secret place. And only those that have come to the end of themselves appear before God in the secret place. In the secret place, you don't have a prayer point. You just tell God, here am I. Do to me as you want. So you submit yourself and he begins to mold you. He begins to, he, he, he is like a priest. He's like the, he's the portal. He sits and he refines, he pours and purifies. And he sends you as a choice bride unto the nations. Your ordination in God is too strong. It will require more. So much hands and allotment of God to bring you to perspective. Having to check you are so rebellious. Having to check you are very hard. You need to give up that you are being hard. And just go to the secret place. Go to a place where you don't have a will of your own. And allow God to take you as he wish. The Bible says you should be like a wind. Let him just do to you as he please. And sometimes you may shed tears. You may cry. Say oh God why did you do this to me? Don't worry. Don't worry. As soon as Zion shall be in, He shall give birth. The mother is crying, ah! But people are waiting outside, buying new clothes, waiting to clothe the baby. And the mother is the only one that is crying. But what is supposed to bring glory and bring celebration was upon the strength of a pain that somebody is going through. And the woman may not be looking beautiful. Your wife that looks very beautiful, the day she wants to give birth, sir, you will see her shattered and battered. Crying, I will beat you. I will deal with you. This foolish man is punishing me. Oh! That is the requirement for the glory. When the baby comes, you carry the baby, you are happy. Ah! But before, it was a traveling. The doctor said, push. Push what? I want to die. Say push. Then he said, glory. We don't want it to be miscarriage. We don't want it to die. If it takes nine months to give birth to anything peculiar upon the earth, how long do you think it will take to give birth to your destiny? No matter how desperate you are, you cannot give birth in two weeks. You cannot get pregnant now and say in two weeks you give birth. You can't get pregnant now and say after one month you give birth. You must wait for the allotment of time. Nine months before you start thinking, okay, I think by now I'm ready to give birth. If it takes nine months to culture a destiny, to bet it on the earth, how long do you think it will take to culture something from eternity and bring it to time? You need to be able to remain with God and dwell in the secret place. Tarry, the Bible said, until you be endured. And like I told you, those that God allowed them to stay longer in the secret place is because the journey is great. He said, eat and drink for the journey is great. Don't be in a rush. Don't be in a hurry. Sometimes you should be wise enough to remain. When you remain with the Lord, he brings out preciousness out of you. The secret place is a place that is too secret that ordinary men do not know. The secret place is a place that is too secret that normal men can't gain say. So in the days you are dwelling in the secret place, you don't need a camera. You don't need to be live. You don't need men to know. And that is why sometimes God will put you in a situation that will push you to the secret place. And it will be as if it's a moment of silence in your life. A moment of drought. A moment of everything just blank. 
But if the cloud be full of rain, the Bible says, it will empty itself. And according to the time of life, a day will come. Everybody that God pushed the secret place, he's preparing them for a problem that only them can solve. When God sees a problem coming, he pushed men to a university in the spirit. It's a university of tears, a cup of suffering, a university of persecution, a university of trials. So he pushed only you. You are the only student. Many people come and they run away. So you find yourself as the only student in the university. You turn left, everybody ran. Everybody left you. And you are there taking note in the university of tears. You are crying. God is teaching you things, using your life as an experimental unit. So you make your friend betray you. Make your mother insult you. Make your father cast you away. Make your wife insult you. And he's teaching you lessons. He's putting you in a secret corner where there is nothing you can do. Just when you want to say, I will kill you. The Lord will not say, calm down. Just when you want to exercise yourself in the flesh, God will tell you, no. You will elongate the number of time I will keep you in this secret place. Stay and learn in this university. So you are the one that is wrong. They are wrong. But God will say, go and apologize. <laughs> it's a secret place. He's working something in you. You are not wrong. They are wrong. Say, don't talk. Just when you have the ability to do, you say, don't do. And sometimes, you have a lot of resources. You don't shut down everything. Then you return back. You begin to weep. You begin to cry. And God that can raise the dead, is still waiting to breathe upon you. And when the time comes, he breathes again. And like the life of Job, the Bible says he restored everything that Job lost. Everything. It's not as if Job gave birth to another children. All the ones that died came back to life. So if there was, if there was a, what's your name? If there was a Kenneth in the children of Job, what's your name? If there was a Mary, it's not as if they would give birth to another child. The Mary that died came back to life. The Kenneth that died came back to life. Because everything he has came back again. Because when God wants to give no limitation, so he will allow you to go through the process. He may, everything may even die. Shake. Anyone that God is done with, God do to them better than the way he met them before. Everything you think you have lost, God can restore it. But sometimes you have to go back to the secret place. Because that is where God creates. God creates in the secret place. Men don't make men. God make men. And God make men in the secret place. The Garden of Eden was designed to be the place where Adam can be. The journey was what? Let us make man in our image after our likeness. But do you know that man was not made? Man was formed. If you check through scripture, man was formed. The making process was supposed to be completed in the secret place. But man came to a point where he hearkened on to the whispers of the dragon. And when the dragon whispers, man has to leave the secret place. And as man left the secret place, God can no longer make him. Because the Holy Ghost is not done doing his work. A man left. And the Holy Ghost walk in the glory. If you want the Holy Ghost to walk, there must be the glory. When God created, nothing was available. God breathed upon the spirit over us. When work comes, things begin to happen. It is our job, our responsibility. To dwell within the secret place of the Lord. So that we abide under his shadow. And when the shadow comes, it begins to educate. It brings us to a point of advantage. The secret place helps you build intimacy with God. It helps you strengthen your relationship with him. There is a secure place in God. A secure place in God is your secret place. It's the only place where you can run to and you can find protection. There is an appointed place. An appointed place is the place where you meet with God. With other people. Here can be an appointed place. This is like an appointed place. Where you and I meet together with God. In an appointed time. The secret place is the secure place. In the secret place. It's only you and him that has that appointment to keep. And there is a marketplace. A marketplace is the place for manifestation. Where you meet with other people that don't know God. 
in the appointed place, you meet with those that are of common faith. In the secret place or the secure place, you meet with only you and God. In the marketplace, you meet with you and the wolves. You and those that are anti-God. You and those that hate God. The Bible said, pray for us that God deliver us from wicked and unreasonable men. Not all men have faith. You will meet them in the marketplace where you do your business, where you do your transactions, where you do things. You meet unreasonable, wicked men. Their goal, their plan is to kill you. People like that will bow themselves with an oath. They will say they will not eat or drink until they kill a prophet. Those kind of people, you need to pray that God deliver you from unreasonable, wicked men. You begin to journey and stick to the secret place, which is the secure place. God will give you strength beyond your enemies. That is the presence of a man. That is the presence of, a, uh, of God. If your president step into the auditorium now, we feel his presence. Suddenly we just feel, ah, Zambian president is here. We begin to accord him a certain level of respect and honor. If your pastor come, even if you're a liar, you stop lying. I don't know about it, but sometimes I just move straight and just surprise some of my members of Shakina. I bring the greeting from Shakina in Lafia. You know, I can just shock you and go to your house when I come. I'll be shocked. I will see you fighting with your mother. Ah! You that sing in choir, fighting with your mother. When I just come, they just behave like holy people. Why? Because now the presence of your pastor make you to be aligned. Sincerity. We are trying to be sincere. We are trying to be sincere. Integrity is what we need, not sincerity. Integrity is how you behave whether men are not looking at you. You will need integrity to survive, not sincerity. Because sincerity is trying to behave as though you are good in my presence. Just because I appear now, suddenly. You know, we used to do long hour prayers and when we are doing it, sometimes people will be sleeping. Nobody will be sleeping. When you come close, nobody will but you're not leave. <laughs> we are praying. When you are coming, <laughs> when you pass, when you... sincerity, integrity is staying in your guard. If it means that you are going to die, you remain. You are like part of the mighty men of David. You go and fight, come back with bruises, no problem. That is how you are giving a crown. No soldier go for battle and he go he's sleeping in the battlefield. You are the one that say you are a soldier at a battlefield. If Jesus called, you answer a billion times. You have never answered ten times. You are talking about a billion times. Sincerity. The presence of a governor, the presence of a province head, there is something it does to you. What do you think the presence of God will do? If you learn how to culture and cultivate the presence of God, you will live life like heaven on the earth. God is only committed to where his presence is. Wise men cry, take not your glory from me. Moses say, if your presence go not with us, take us not away from here. I will send my angels, I will send my children, but no, I want your presence to go. Do you know the reason? Because it's not possible for the presence of God to go and angels will not go. Do you know? If I want the ministers or the governors or the counselors, the commissioners within this region to come to this church, all I need to do is to invite the president. If the president comes, all of them will come. Is that not true? They will come by themselves. Why? Because they are coming because of the president. So if God presence come, every angels will follow because there is entourage. So, the beauty of the secret place is when you dwell in the secret place, angel will appear. Ah. Cherubim will appear. Seraphim will appear. Sometimes, even archangel will appear. Not because they want to appear, but because anytime they are master, they, he comes, they too will come. I saw so many angels because I was seeing Jesus. I saw cherubims. I saw seraphims. I saw, there was never a time that Jesus came to me that he does not come upon the wings of the cherubims and the seraphims. They come not because they want to come, but because he wrote upon their wings. He can't move without them. Have you ever seen a president move without an entourage? That is how it works. 
So when your pursuit, your focus is him, those ones will come by default. But it's possible for another kind of certain angels to come and see you and God did not come. So when Gabriel appeared to Zachariah, he said, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. Do you doubt my word? He's trying to let him understand, I am here in the posture of like a chief of army staff. I am coming from the secret place where God dwells. It's not every angel that has proximity to God. There are some angels that are very far from God. And your proximity to God determines the level of the glory you can carry. Your proximity with God determines the level of the, the honor you can carry. No wonder Lucifer was adorned so much. Why? Because he was a cherubim that covered it. They make him a cherubim and an archangel. Only him. Only him was given the privilege to be both an archangel and a cherubim. The Bible said, thou art an anointed cherub that covered it. Why? Because I have said this so. So God gave him so much glory and so much beauty. More than other angels. Why? He became so closer to him. Because the more closer you are to God, the more of God you carry, the more of his glory you carry. No wonder. They bow. The creatures, they bow. Crying, holy, holy. The Lord God Almighty. Who is holy. So there is, because of what they behold, the shadow, anytime he appears, he reveals a new dimension, they bow and they cry. Because anytime the shadow appears, the glory of God will appear. Are you there now? Because we're going to pray now. Anytime the shadow appears, the glory appears. They are not bowing. The Bible says day and night till now. And anytime you appear before heaven, you die. Till today. Anytime you have an encounter and you are caught up to heaven, you realize you lose everything that makes you who you are. And you die. When you die, they come again and they breathe life into you. And they clothe you with a glory before you can speak with God. Because God exists in a realm of glory all by himself. You cannot do business with him except in the glory. So even if you come to heaven without a glory, they cover you in glory. Then they speak to you in the glory. So in that realm, when they cover you, you begin to hear him talk. So you are equal with him in the realm. So his heart is talking to your heart. Communication is done spirit to spirit. Because you are elevated to a realm in glory where you are equal with God. So you leave that realm. You come down to the earth. You are supposed to find a way to maintain yourself in that realm. And how do you do that? The secret place of the most high God. Because that is an extension of heaven on the earth. Because that was the intention of God from the very beginning. I end with this. You now begin to realize that when men begin to dwell more with God, they begin to look like him, act like him, and behave like him. No wonder Moses went to Mount Sinai. After he stayed for 40 days and 40 nights, he came down and his face began to glow. Ah, how did that happen? Because he went to a secret place of the Most High and he dwelt under the shadow. And immediately when the shadow appeared, it rubbed glory upon him. The Bible says people can't even behold his face. Why? Because he partook of a glory. If you can dwell with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights, your face will shine. If you can lock yourself inside, just find a place, lock yourself inside. Say me, I will not on my phone. I won't do Facebook, no YouTube, no. Lock yourself. After 40 days, 40 nights, your face will shine. The glory comes in isolation. It comes in separation. It was not trial and error because David took few men again to the cave, Adulam again. And he made out of them mighty men again. That means anybody can replicate the same thing. If it happened with many people, it means it can happen with anybody. It was not a try and error because it was, seems as though it was not possible. He may slay Goliath. He took few people again. They ran to him in distress. They gather. And later on, we hear about men like Shama, men like Dodo, men like Age, men that did things that were seemingly impossible to men. How did that happen? They came and come under the same shadow of the Almighty. And now, apostolically speaking, was made to their life. Your calling in God to require an isolation. When will you isolate yourself to? When will you go on hibernation? When will you be quarantined? There was a moment, COVID-19. They said, let us be quarantined. When will you go on a lockdown? When will you quarantine yourself unto God? 
And after a while, you will come out glistering in glory. And men will ask, where is this one coming from? Where is this small boy coming from? He's not a small boy. You are the one that did not know. Because men are coming from institutions that are far younger and beyond time. There is what is referred to as the school of the spirit. Nobody is the chancellor. All of us are students. Everybody is a student of the school of the spirit. Anytime you enter there, you are talked to. You are communicated to. We are sure that some of them are invisible creatures. And they come, they begin to educate you. Have you seen yourself in the realm of the spirit and elders are teaching you things? Have you seen yourself in the realm In, and to be in Zambia and see yourself in the spirit with another minister in the US. It's possible for you to be in the spirit with apostle gift in a village casting out demons. You can appear in the school of the spirit and borrow somebody's grace and advance with it. In the secret place is a place where you partake of every possibility. In the secret place is the place where we conform to become like the Christ. I want to let you understand that things are made possible in the secret place. But until you understand the benefit that comes in the secret place, you will never see the need to go there. Lastly, the Bible says when he descended, he ascended. And when he ascended, he descended and gave gift to men. What happened in the secret place is that God, the same God that descend, he will ascend. And when he ascend, he will descend with giftings to you in the secret place. When you dwell in the secret place, angels will come and touch your tongue with coals of fire. In the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. Isaiah was a prophet in Israel. How can a prophet in Israel be a lying prophet? He never knew he was a liar until the day the glory of God appeared. The glory of God exposed our darkness. Darkness can be hidden in mortal man. It takes the glory of God to purge, purify, and reveal the darkness. In the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. And the train of his glory filled the temple. And I saw seraphims. And they took coals and put upon my lips and purged and purified me. Because I just realized I was a man of unclean lips. And I dwell among the people. Because from chapter 1 of that Isaiah to Isaiah to around 5, 8, 5, 6, he was speaking against the people. They are sinners. They are evil people. He was prophesying by the gift of the prophetic. No problem. In the day the glory of God appeared, he now realized in the glory, even the prophet is guilty. Because the same glory that came to make, came to kill. And the glory came to kill the king. You should go and study about King Uzziah. A man that God marvelously helped, not qualified to be a king. When God helped him, he became proud and arrogant. And he broke the protocol of God. The glory of God that made him kill him. And when that glory killed him, Suddenly, Isaiah was in the temple. He was part of the 80 priests that we are trying to tell Uzziah, don't enter the temple. Don't go beyond your jurisdiction. Don't break it. He said, no, I will dare. And in the day he died, the Bible said it was not long enough. The glory of God killed him. It was the seraphims and the cherubims. There are beings that are jealous and zealous for the things of God. I have seen the cherubim, I have seen the seraphims. You don't joke with them. You don't say before them you make a mistake. They may slap you and you'll be deaf. These are beings that are jealous for the things of God. They guard the glory and the holiness of God. God said he can never share his glory with any man. Talk more of his holiness. But he gave it to beings. The cherubims and the seraphims. They are custodians of the glory and the holiness of God. So anytime they appear, if you are not holy, they judge you by default. So when they appear to kill Uzziah, they now realize, ah, there is a prophet in this temple too that is not holy. When Isaiah saw, he wanted to run away. And they tell him, say, let's solve this. Let's save this young man. They took coals. And this is your tongue that is lying. Take it. That was his only security in that day. If not, he would have died. Can you rise up on your feet and pray? Oh God, as we appear in the secret place, God and purify us. Because after that purification, Isaiah began to prophesy more better things. From that day, he began to see about the government of the Lord coming upon the earth. He began to prophesy about Jesus, about the coming of the Christ. He began to prophesy more better report. Open your mouth and pray.
Oh God, touch and beautify me. Take me back to the secret place. But eventually I have lost. I have lost my passion for the secret place. I have come out of the secret place. Oh God, take me back. Take me back to the secret place. Help me partake of your glory. Help me partake of your glory. All I know, I pray. Our time is gone. Esh kabarias kata. Manda tabele de barias kata. Ranta kapa basha pa. Lega de belina kabarias kata. Ranta kapa belas kadia. Ante kenia barades. Sarabana basket el de la babola de skia. Ranta kapa bola de kenia kata. Ranta kapa balas. Ranta kapa nada. Rabada balada bakas kaba. Randa baba baba baos kabradia. Ranta kapa bas kabrada. Ranta kapa balas kadia. Pray, pray. I step into the glory of God. I step into glory. I step into glory. Touch and purify me. Touch and purify me. Every iota of the flesh let it die. Every flesh limitations die. Randa babela de yaskata. Randa kaba bos kabara da bolles kedia. Randa kaba bela de bolia. Ada balis. Raba bela te kiri yaskata. Esh kaba. Kaba babos. Raba babos. Randa baba baba babos. You are more than this. You are more than this. You are more than this. There is a glory within you. There is a glory. There is a glory. There is a grace within you. Elebe sekre de baladi askata. Es kapababas. Rabababababas. Rabababababas. Rabababababababas. Ranta kabas kabalata. Shabalada babas kabalada babaladia. Shabababada babalada babos kadia. Pray, 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 pray. As the Lord for a fresh grace, a fresh grace, a fresh glory. I partake of glory, glory. I partake of glory. I step into glory. The presence of God, the power of God, the presence of God, the power of God. I partake of the presence of God, the power of God. Go higher, go higher, go higher. Oh my God. We go fly, oh my God. The hand of the Lord rest upon you. The hand of the Lord rest upon you. We go fly, the hand of the Lord rest upon you. There is an ordination in the spirits. You are rich and not in the shadow of the spirit. Lions roar. Kabala skabadi daskata. You go fly. Yes, yes, yes. It's in you. The channels of your spirit is open. You are the channels, the channels, the channels of your spirit open. Lions roar. The channels of your spirit open. You go fly. I unlock the channels of your spirit. I unlock the channels of your spirit. Kados, 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 kados. Kados, Kados, Kados It's the Lamb of God who sits upon the tomb He 
alone is worthy of my praise. Kados, 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 kados. Kados, kados, kados. Kados, kados. Kados, kados, kados. Is the Lamb of God? Is the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne? He alone, He alone is worthy of my praise. Kados, 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 kados. Kados, 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 kados. Is the Lamb of God? Is the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne? He alone, He alone is worthy of my praise. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Kados, 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 Kados. Is the Lamb of God? Is the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne? In the name of the Lord, is it all my prayer? Until I see your face, until I know your will, my prayer will not stop, my passion will not die. Iba ho, Iba. Until we see you face to face, until we know our God, our prayer will not stop, our passion will not die. Iba ho. Iba iba o iba o iba o iba o iba o iba iba o iba o iba o iba o iba o iba iba o 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 iba until I see you face to face, until I know you more and more, my prayer will not stop, my passion will not die. Iba ho, iba iba ho, iba ho, iba ho, iba ho, iba ho, iba iba ho, iba ho, iba ho, iba ho, iba ho, iba ho. Until we see you face to face, until we know you more know and more, I pray I will not stop. My passion will not die. Ah yeah 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 yeah. Hey yeah 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 yeah. Yes. Ah yeah yeah yeah. The hand of the Lord is coming upon you now. The hand of the Lord is coming upon you now. I say separation in the spirit. I say separation in the spirit. I say separation in the spirit. I know our time is fast spent. I know our time is fast spent. But we are in the congregation. And you know you need sincerely the help of God. You just want me to pray for you and release grace upon you. Run to the phone right now. I'll be done in the next three minutes. Run to the phone right now. You are in the congregation. And somehow you are weary. You are tired. You feel you have come to the end of yourself. And you just want me to pray for you briefly. Run to the front right now. Our time is fast spent. Right now, right now. Right now, by adventure. You want me to pray for you. Trusting God for the supply of grace and strength to step into that realm in oppression in glory. Run to the front right now. Go down and pray and ask the Lord, Father, I have come to the end of myself. Right now, help me, O oh God. Help me, O oh God. See you face to face until I know you more and more. My prayer will not stop, my passion will not die. Iba ho, Iba ho. Until I see you face to face, 
until I know you more and more. My prayer will not stop, my passion will not. Until I see you face you face. Talk to Jesus, talk to Jesus. Until I know you more and more. That warfare is not to death. My prayer will not stop. That warfare is not up to death. That is grace. As my hands come upon you, that is the supply of grace. There is a supply of the grace and the power of God. I don't care. I don't care where altars speak against you. I don't care which power speak against you. I bring you the glory of God. Oh my God. Aya. Esh. Ravele. Ravele Askadia. The hand of the Lord is touching you already. The presence and the power of God. I see the Lord restoring intimacy. Restoring intimacy. Many of you have lost your intimacy. You have lost your relationship with God. There is a restoration. A restoration. Talk to Jesus, talk to Jesus. You are streaming online, talk to the Lord. The Lord supply grace for your next season. Supply grace for your next season. My prayer will not stop, my passion will not die. Yes, yes, yes. The Lord is connecting you back again. The Lord is connecting you back. Many of you are no longer feeling the presence of God. I see the presence being restored. Ichabod. The presence is being restored. That disappointment was because a glory left you. It was because a glory left you. You had the backing of God. You have lost your concentration. It's been restored. God will commit himself to you again. He will commit himself to you again. Men are striking covenant with God. New covenant being initiated. Covenant that have been broken have been initiated. Your callings have been activated. Your calling is being activated. Oh my God. As our hands come upon you, it's a flame and a fire that burn it. An impartation of grace. The Lord is numbering the prophet. Numbering the prophet. Numbering the prophet. The Lord is numbering four prophets. Four prophets. I see an oil resting right now. Right now. Right now. Yes, ushers, help them. One, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, take it, take it, take it, take it. I activate your eyes to see. I activate your ears to hear. Ancient mantles fall. There is an oil, an oil, an anointing of the spirit. Coming upon four people, four people, four people. Your stomach will begin to burn. Your stomach will begin to burn. Us has helped them. One, two, three, four. Take it. I see three apostles. Three apostles. Three apostles. The Lord confirms your ordinations. The Lord confirms your ordinations. Let the fire of God rest. Let it rest. Let it rest. Let it rest. Like a weight. Like a weight. Like a weight. Like a weight. 
like a weight. One, yes, yes, ushers, help. One, one, two. Let it rest, let it rest. Three. There is an oil, an oil. The Lord said, I will number evangelists. I will number four evangelists, four evangelists. As I stretch out my hand, I release that oil, that ointment for evangelism. Prophetic evangelism. Prophetic evangelism. Where are the four evangelists? One, two, three. Ushers, help that lady. Take it. Take it. Take it. From today, be burden for evangelism. Yes, I see the power of God resting upon you. Resting upon you. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Shakaina glory. Shakaina glory. You will not let me go. You will not let me go. Shakaina glory. Shakaina glory. Shakaina glory. You will not let me go. You will not let me go. Shakaina glory. Shakaina glory. Apostle gift. Come. Shakaina glory. The light come. You will not let me go. You will not let me go. You will not let me go. I am Shakaina glory. Shakaina glory. Shakaina glory. Shakaina glory. You will not let us go. You will not let me go. You will not let us go. You will not let me go. I am Shakaina glory. Shakaina glory. Shakaina glory. Shakaina glory. You will not let us go. You will not let us go. You will not let me go. The Lord strengthen you. The Lord empower you. From this night comes a visitation. You will be introduced to the angels of your calling. And as my hands come upon you, as we lay hands on you, we are activating you into the realm of the glory. You are going to return back having encounters. Many of you are going to begin to have trance, visions, dreams. Your eyes will be open in the spirit to see. So we are going to just lay hands on them. We are going to lay hands and pray for them. So maybe... We're going to pray for them. Lay hands on them. Activate them in the spirit. It's possible. Yes. Right. Yes. So maybe we just go lay hands and activate them in the spirit. Yeah, we lay hands and pray for them. Yeah. So we do that. Shakaina glory, Shakaina glory. Ika tu shakaba, Ika tapra gata, Ika kabra gatia, Ika kabra gatia, Elebe kete kubra, Ika tapaba kaka, Ika tapaba kaka, Ika tapaba kaka, Ika taleke bayata, Ika kabria so, Ika bayata do, Ika baka taya barade, Ika kabra gata, Ika tara kabayata, Elebe raka yata, Elebe raka taya bayata. Ya <laughs> Sokhaya, <laughs> <laughs> 
it's a love giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. River flow. Yataka parika tuja. Let's go, Rabadia. Totaka parabadia. Totaka parabadia. Totaka parabadia. Totaka parabadia. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Flow, let it flow right here, right now. And that's a river flow. Ricky Tiki Billy Feel, I tell you, I tell you, my It's a life giving river. Oh, let it flow right here. Right yeah. And that's a river flow. It's a Takarina. Yeketalika brantia, uteke libra dia katusha, lembri katusha kada, anteke brada kabaya tusha, ilikenta lakradi katuta, imprenta kabala kaba, yekatalika brenda kabo, unta kabara kadia, elika bara kadia, anteke bereketa, teteke tata tata, rateki biyato kaba, ilibreketa kabrada, intelika tusha, entika tete tete wa, elibra sushela, yekatalia so. Let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Flow, let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, let it flow. Ati ki ti ki la. Yete ke mi di ti la ti le te ma me wa. Ati. Let it flow, let it flow. Flow, let it flow. Right here, right now. And as a river flow, it begins to bring every dead thing to life. It's a life-giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. Let my saliva flow. You begin to bring every day into life. It's a life giving river. Only flow right here, right now. Hey, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, hey. Hey ya ya, hey! Ati kili bila tele bila teke ma, ati la ti la, yeto yeto kila ti li bi, yeli giti giti giti. Hey ya ya, 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 hey ya ya. Mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wind. We say blow, 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 blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your. Yeah, we say blow, 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 blow like a. Ati ki pili ki hila tele di la te. Spirit of victory. Yeah, we say blow, 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 blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Come on, as we go. Yeah, high, high. Ha 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 
la tila bile te Who is calling my name? She got his calling my name. She got if you call my name, I will answer a billion times. Who is calling my name? She got his calling my name. She got if you call my name. I will answer a billion. I am a soldier, say. I'm a soldier in the part of you waiting to hear the voice of my commander. Jesus, if you call my name, I will answer a I am a soldier. I am a soldier waiting to hear. The voice of my commander. I will answer a billion times. Who is calling my name? Who is calling my name? Oh. Jesus is calling my name. Oh. Jesus, if you call my name, I will answer a billion times. Who is calling my name? Who is calling my name? Oh. Jesus is calling my name. Jesus, if you call my name, I will answer. Yeah. Yeah. Who is calling my name? You are there. Tire, You are there. And I will be, and I will be content in every circumstance. You are tire, You are there. Such a And I will be, I will be content in every circumstance. You are tired. You are now. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up. So there's nothing I can do to let you down. Doesn't take a trophy. Doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more love. I'll never be more love than I am right now. Joy, joy, you are no joy. And I will be, I will be content. You are tired. You are. We say, 
Yesu against you shall ever prosper in the name of Jesus. And every arrow and tongue that lies against you in judgment we condemn in the name of Jesus. Every sickness and disease is banished in this atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Every doctor's report is changed in the name of Jesus. Grow from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Grow from grace to grace in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens over you be opened from tonight in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare from this night, every enemy of your soul, I bring them down in the name of Jesus. I frustrate every wickedness of the devil over your life in the name of Jesus. You shall not die in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare sound health for you in the name of Jesus. Fresh encounters in the name of Jesus. Abundant supply of resources in the name of Jesus. Every gate that has been closed be opened in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord be gracious unto you. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a shout. Favor me, you. Favor me, you. Holy Ghost. Me, you. Holy Ghost. Dance, dance, dance. Favor me. The devil is stupid. Favor me. Holy Ghost. Remember me. Oh. Remember me. Oh. Holy Ghost. Hey. Hey. Favor me. Favor me. Holy Ghost. Another measure. Another measure. Holy Ghost, remember me, oh, remember me, Holy Ghost, another measure, hey. another measure, Holy Ghost, hey. favor me, oh, favor me, oh, Holy Ghost, favor me. Ah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 